Welcome home. You're watching Legacy TV. I'm Sarah Pearsons, and we are so thankful that you chose to watch today. We are in a series, week three of a series Jeremy taught last year at KCM Ministers Conference. And this series has blessed me so much. It's helped me as a minister um, just refuse to quit. I want to encourage you today, no matter what you are facing, whatever you're going through, we are not of those who draw back. We go forward. We press forward. We keep going. And this is what people of faith do. They refuse to quit in the face of trials, in the face of tests and problems. You keep plowing. You keep working. You know, sometimes plowing takes some work. But man, it is worth it. You don't want to quit before you get to your destination. You want to keep pressing through and press into faith. You know, faith is a location. And sometimes you've got to press past some things in order to get over into faith. Have you ever heard people say that? I need to get in faith about this. I need to get over into faith about that. Well, that's what we're talking about. You've got to press past frustration and press over into his plan. So I want to uh, encourage you to listen with um, your heart. Open your heart to hear from God today and it will change your life. I'll be back right after this message to pray with you at the end. And the Holy Spirit said in chapter 13, separate me, separate unto me. Remember that sanctified, separated? Separate unto me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work that I've called them to do. What's he saying? I can use these guys. I found some guys I can use. And then they prayed and they fasted and they sent them out and they took John Mark with them. You remember this, their assistant? And man, they got on a boat and they went down to another city. And then they got off there and got on another boat and went somewhere else and went somewhere else. And it reads just a few verses and you read through it in about four seconds and you forget to realize this is maybe days and weeks on end of journeying. And finally it says they get to the island of Paphos and they go throughout the entire island. Somebody help me out. What are they doing out there? Plowing. I mean, these are two of the original plowers taking this thing where it had never been before, plowing and plowing and plowing. And then it says they found a sorcerer. I don't know if that means they found him like they were looking for him or if he found them or whatever happened, they ran into this guy and he's trying to stop the word of the Lord and he's trying to stop it to getting to the, to the uh, political leaders in that area. Scripture tells us he's trying to stop the word. Man, Paul gets up in his face. This is one of those moments you wish you could go back and watch. And he called, he said, you foul, you son of a devil, you. He said, you all fraud full of all deceit. How dare you try to, watch this, pervert the straight ways of the Lord. Paul's saying, I'm plowing here and I ain't trying to go around you. You in my way. How dare you try to make me move? You move. I'm not moving. This is plowing. He's up against this demon-possessed, demon-inspired sorcerer named Elamis. Does Elamis go to anybody else's church? Anybody ever met Elamis while you were plowing? You got so excited about that town God moved you to and you're starting and you're going to launch it out and Elamis comes knocking. <laughs> this is what happens when you're plowing. Stuff's in the way. And, and Paul said, you're going to be blind for a time and a mist fell on him and the, the, the proconsul guy there says he believed. Yeah, I bet he believed. I mean, <laughs> just, just things happening in front of him. And then they got on a boat there to go somewhere else and the scripture says this, John Mark return to Jerusalem. What is that? He's going home. He's going back. This just got way too real. I'm going back to Jerusalem, right? Seed sowing is easy in Jerusalem. Thousands of people a day are being born again. The church is being added to. We can sow seeds out here. It's this plowing stuff I'm not so into. And then later in chapter 15, Paul and Barnabas decide, let's go back out. 
Sometimes I feel like I got that on me. Let's go. I'm not just been home long enough. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go back out. All those places we went before, Paul said, let's go back out. Let's see how they're doing. We plowed. Let's sow some seed now. And Barnabas says, yeah, cool. All right, I'll get John Mark. And Paul said, what now? You getting who? John Mark, my cousin. And he said, uh, he's not coming. One translation says, Paul did not think it was fitting that they bring with them one who left the work. Paul said, yeah, hey, I love him. I'm sure he's called, but he doesn't fit on this team. I can't use that. That's of no use to me. Somebody who's going to bail out when this thing gets out, what am I going to do with that? The Bible says the contention got so sharp between them. I heard Pastor Rick say one time that that could have been translated or could tell us that there may have been a physical altercation between them. That's how heated this thing got. And Paul went one way and Barnabas went the other. Have you ever thought about if uh, you don't plow the ground, it won't take the seed? If you don't plow the ground, it's too hard, she said. If you don't plow the ground, it won't take the seed. Thank you for saying in one statement what I'm spending 18 minutes trying to say. If you don't plow the ground, it won't take the seed. Did you get anything out of this today? Thank you. So good. But what I started to say to you a moment ago, and I'll be done here in a moment, was I'm more aware today, right now, in this moment, of the people who have plowed, who have gone before us and plowed and plowed and plowed and refused to quit. It just came all over me today, the, the, the honor that it is. And, and let me say for a moment to those who I might represent age-wise, those 30-somethings, 20, 30-somethings, you and I are so honored, and you're as honored to sit there as I am to stand here, to hear this and to be fed this. I think Pastor Caldwell this morning just touched me in a, in a place in my heart. It plowed some ground in my heart, and I sat there overcome just thinking, this, this couple plowed in Little Rock. Year after year after year, the plowing that's taken place there, the plowing that's taken place in the city of Chicago, the plowing that's taken place in the city of Moscow, the plowing that's taken place in Colorado and all over the world, the plowing that's taken place on television, the plowing that's taken place in prisons, the plowing that's taken place in churches in Branson, churches in Florida, the plowing that has taken place all over the world, and the honor of that thing just came all over me today. And I'm telling you, generation who who, if, if I can be so bold as to say I stand here in representation of, you and I more than ever ought to watch our words and what we say about those who have gone before. And I'll add, I'll add one little thing to it. Do I do this? I dressed on purpose today. I went out and bought myself another suit, spent some money, bought a nice shirt. You like my shirt? <laughs> but I did it on purpose, and I believe certainly that the Lord is worthy of it. But I'm preaching today, how you can tell it just gets on you, that the men and women who stand behind this holy desk and pour into you and I for the next three days if they think it's worthy of a suit and tie, it's worthy of a suit and tie. And I want to say, too, I'm not trying to make this thing listen to me. It's not about, I'm not trying to make it about a dress code. If the Lord has said something to you specifically in your church and how you're to do things, you do what he said to do. But a few years ago, a few decades ago, People in suit and ties looked down on people who came into church that didn't have that. They couldn't dress like that. And we know that's wrong. You shouldn't do that. But listen to me. Again, young people, my, my people, 
It's equally wrong to look down on somebody wearing a suit and tie. Where would that come from? There's no honor in that. I don't know if I'm saying this right. It was sure big in me earlier today. You just take it and do whatever you want to with it, but seek the Lord about it. And won't you just excuse me, older generation, for a second. I'm going to say something to, to my people again. If Justin Timberlake can tell the world he's bringing sexy back, we can tell the church we're bringing honor back. I'm just going to say that. Now, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. You're better off. I better leave it. Back to Luke 9, and we'll close. You seek the Lord and find out what you're supposed to do with that. Luke 9, this will come as a surprise to some of you, comes right before Luke 10. Listen to what verse, t- uh, verse 1 of chapter 10 says. It says, after these things, or in the same context as what he's just said, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his what? His face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. What's he telling them to go do? Go plow. He got 70 people, broke them up into 35 teams of two, and said, y'all go plow. Why? Because the ultimate seed sower is coming right behind you, and I need this ground ready. Go plow. And then he said to them, listen, I can, this, this proves it right here. He said, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. I think we've read that thinking, he's telling them, go harvest. No, he's saying, you go plow, I'll sow, then we got to pray for people to harvest this. The word of the Lord that came through Brother Keith this morning, did you catch it? There are those who have labored, those who have labored in the dark places, in the dark times, in the hard times. What's that labor? Plowing. He said, now you go harvest. Yes, yes, yes. This is what's going on right here. You go plow, I'm going to sow, then you and I are going to have to come into agreement that the Lord of the harvest is going to send some people out here to reap the work of what we're doing. He said, go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Verse 4, carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals. What's he saying? Leave your net. Leave the net at home. Mark chapter 6, I believe it is. He says, don't take money with you. Don't even take a change of clothes. That, that account of it pulls out this, that he gave them power. He graced them with something. He gave it to them. That's, that's, gift. that's a gift. That's grace. And he's not saying, you don't need money. He's just saying, I want you dependent upon what I gave you to bring the money in. Don't take anything out there with you that you're going to be tempted to try to fall back on. Leave the net. Don't carry any of this with you. You know how this goes. Uh, it, it says in uh, verse 8, whatever Jesus said, there's whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things are said before you, heal the sick there, say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Watch this, verse 10. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, Mark 6 adds, they don't hear you and they don't receive you. He said, go out into the streets and say the very dust of your city, which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Mark 6, Jesus said, you shake the dust off your feet. Again, he's talking to ministers about their ministry. Are are we agreed on that? I think sometimes we've heard this instruction, ah, shake the dust. You go into a service, you go into, maybe it's a service in your own church, maybe you're traveling and you're ministering to another congregation, and man, I've been there more times than I want to be there, but you go in and you feel like you've got something from God, you prayed over this thing, you prayed, you, you studied yourself full, you prayed yourself hot, you preached yourself empty, right? And you just feel like you gave it everything you got and the people could not look more bored or disinterested. And it was like talking to nothing, talking to no one, except these no ones looked mad at you about it. They didn't hear it. They didn't receive it. 
And the temptation is to read this instruction and in a tone of defiance, say, I shake the dust. Listen to me. Everything Jesus ever told you to do, you got to do by faith. So why would you have to do that by faith? Because if you're worth anything as a minister, shaking the dust is hard. Because your heart beats for the people to hear it. Your heart beats for them to receive it. You're not content with it not working in their lives. You're not content with the congregation the Lord's given you staying broke and staying sick and staying depressed. That doesn't satisfy you. And so when you experience this and you encounter this and people aren't receiving it, they're not hearing it, they're not receiving you, they're not hearing you, you have to shake the dust by faith. Now remember, where'd this whole thing start? Just a few verses before this in Luke 9. Jesus has set his face. And he's going to Jerusalem. This path takes him through Samaria. Did they receive him? No. No. They didn't. So Jesus has some experience with this in what to do. They didn't receive him. And he said, look, if, they didn't, if there are those that didn't receive me, there's going to be some that don't receive you. Here's what you have to do. By faith, shake the dust of it. Plowing is a dirty job. It's not a clean one. You're out there in that dry dust and hard dirt and it's getting all over you. And when they walk into these towns to preach the kingdom, they're not walking on paved roads or riding in cars or airplanes. These guys are walking dirt roads, dust flying all, and they, they literally have the dust of that town on them. And Jesus said, before you go on, you're going to have to do this and do it by faith. Shake the dust. Or in other words, don't take this town with you to the next one. Don't take this experience with these people to the next one. Pastors, I can hear you going, well, that works for you. You travel. <laughs> what about this same group staring me down week after week after week? Don't take this Sunday with you to the next one. If you don't cast the care of that, it'll turn into a hard heart towards them. And what will end up happening is you will begin to expect that everywhere you go because you're allowing your experience to severely limit your expectation and you begin then to preach and instead of it being saturated with love for the people, it's got a hardness to it. Instead of being softened over 50 years, you've been hardened over 50 years and you're wondering, where's my impact? How come nobody knows who I am and how come I ain't been able to do anything in ministry? It's because there's a hard heart in you and you got to watch out now. Listen, I'm looking around and I'm not saying I know this by the Spirit. I'm just saying I know it because it's true. There are people in here covered head to toe in the dust of 2016. Don't take it with you. Some of y'all covered in the dust in 1974. Don't <laughs> take it with you. That's... How do, you, how do you know you're covered in it? What's coming out of your mouth all the time? Oh, these people hurt us. These people wounded us. These people left us. They said, I'll follow you wherever you go. And then they left, and it's talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. And I've sat with pastors hearing these stories, and I'm thinking, did this happen last week? And he's like, when did all this occur? You know, the turn of the century. I mean, it's been a long time. Folks, we got to shake this dust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not bringing last year with us into this one. We're not bringing old relationships with us into this one. We're not bringing bitter people with us into this new year that the Lord's given us. And if you'll cast the care of it and say, Lord, that's not between me and them. That's between them and you. And if there's something you need me to fix or do better, I'm all yours. I'm yours to command and I'll do it. But if I'm obeying you, then I'm moving on next town. 
And I'm going to find somebody somewhere that will hear this and receive this. And you can be like the prophet Isaiah. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Use me. Use me. Stand up on your feet. He loves you. Somebody say, he loves me. He loves me. Say, he's called me. But see, now you got to answer this question. Can he use me? If you're willing to drop the net and leave the nest, he can use you. If you are willing to shake the dust off your feet, if you're willing to forget the past and press towards the high call of God, he can use you.
Before we leave the air today, I want to give you the opportunity to sow into Pearson's ministries. Every time Jeremy and I have had the opportunity to sow into a work, into the kingdom of God in any capacity, we have seen growth in our lives. When you sow, you grow. Think about it. I want you to picture yourself just getting a little taller, a little bit uh, stronger, gaining more influence every time you give into the kingdom of God. That's what's happening for you. When you sow, you grow. And we are so blessed and so thankful for all of our partners and what you are doing to help us preach Jesus to everyone, everywhere, every day. If you're watching in the U.S., it's really simple. You can give via text, and you can just text PMI in any dollar amount to the number 28950. And if you're outside of the U.S. and you'd like to sow, please visit pearsonsministries.com. Um, our staff was just telling me before we started this uh, to, to film this that they are so blessed every time they get a testimony from you, every time you call in or write in, they get to talk to the partners, every time we get a chance to pray with you, it is our greatest joy. I mean, sometimes they come downstairs and tell me testimonies and there's just tears welling up in their eyes, streaming down their face. They send me messages, listen to what happened today, listen to what, the, what happened for this family and for this couple. They got this job and they were blessed with this amount of money and healing for their babies. Man, it is such a joy for us to see God working in your life and the word of God producing results and fruit every day. We are rejoicing with you. Please call us, email us, go on the Legacy Studios app and send us a message. However we can get in contact with you, we want to help you. We're a resource for you today. And if you're a first time partner, contact us. We'd love to send you um, a legacy letter and a welcome package and talk with you. We want to pray with you about anything that you're dealing with. And we want to see you overcome. We are in faith with you about what God is doing in your life. And we want to stand with you today. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in and watching today. Um, remember that you are welcome, always welcome here in the house of faith. And we will see you next time on Legacy TV.